Welcome everybody. We are live here at Spring Valley High School. You got Spring Valley Timberwolf baseball on once again here on the D and D Sports Network. As we look around the booth here, we got Ooh, Coach May, Joe Kinzer, the legend back on the air, Daryl McCoy. We got our guy Charlie on the PA, and then we got Max, Matt, and Tristan out in the field. So uh, tonight we have the Huntington Highlanders coming to town. Crosstown rivalry game, Joe, as the Timberwolves will take on Huntington High. Yeah, Huntington High coming in with a record of 6-8. and eight In their last meeting, they defeated Riverside 6-4. Uh, to four. These two teams tangled up again in the season opener in which Spring Valley handled the Highlanders pretty handily that day, 12 to 2, but that's been over a month ago. And, you know, Spring Valley got off to that hot start on spring break. They went out of town. They lost four in a row. And then since then, they have been a trucking so far as they are averaging over 13 runs a game the last four uh, games. Atherton, Kentucky, 10-0. Uh, they defeated Capitol 17-1, Lincoln County 19-1, and Riverside 17-4. So, guys, this is a big sectional game for both the Highlanders and the Timberwolves. It absolutely is. As you look down uh, the roster, Joe, for each side, who do we got? At what uh, spots on the field are they playing? All right, so let's first of all give the uh, defense positioning for the Timberwolves of Spring Valley. Uh, from left to right in the outfield, you'll go with uh, Cam Purdue, Grant Stratton, and Ethan Fraley. And then the left side of the infield, third base, will be Jonah Harold, the shortstop Cole Ferguson. On the right side, the second baseman will be Garrett Wagoner. And then first baseman will be uh, Sam Booth behind the plate. Jameson Smith and on the mound will be Brody Spencer. Guys, one thing about Spring Valley, their defense has been shaky. I saw that one time this year in which they lost to Cabell Midland. They have gave up 15 unearned runs. So, that, so that's a lot. So, you know, so one of the keys of the game for Spring Valley Coach May is going to have to be defense because they've been shaky at times this year. Uh, well, they have. We've watched them about every home game, and, and they do. They go through their spells where they, they try to maybe do a little too much or maybe try to make that spectacular play. And, uh, but, uh, Joe, to be honest, when, when you get these two teams or Cabell Midland involved in this tri-state area here, you can throw all the records out because it's rivalry games. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a tough section, like you said. I mean, it's rivalry games. I mean, the winner of this game, you know, uh, you like to play your best baseball heading into the final uh, few weeks of, of the regular season and the postseason play, but you can throw them out because more than likely these two teams are going to probably play for a third time in postseason play. So, and, and, and you hit the nail on the head, it's rivalry games. Same region's hurricane. We had a national wonder, anthem. Step aside real quick for the national anthem. Are you ready to join the future of coal mining? At Blackhawk Mining, we are a national leader in the production of metallurgical coal with a foundation built on a strong safety culture and an unmatched work ethic. We're not just co-workers, we're a family, and together we create an environment where everyone can thrive and make their mark. We invite you to join our team at Blackhawk Mining as we continue to build on our tradition while empowering the next generation of coal miners. Blackhawk Mining, shaping the future of coal production today. If you're looking for a great selection and a great experience for your next Harley-Davidson, come on down to Mount St. Harley-Davidson here in Del Barton, West Virginia. We have new 2023 models in stock and ready for delivery. Special financing available. Or choose pre-owned with one of the largest inventories in the tri-state area with great low prices. Visit our showroom filled with licensed Harley-Davidson apparel and more. Don't write that check until you check with us, Mountain State Harley-Davidson, 61 Priest Bottom Road, or visit us online at mountainstatehd.com. Here at Logan Bank & Trust, we are committed to serving the needs of the Southern coal fields. So if you need to borrow money, remember, we are just a click away. Here at LB&T, we make online banking easy. 
We've taken the hassle out of applying for a loan on our new website. It's as simple as going to our lbnt.com website and choosing the loan product that best suits your needs. Your loan on your time. Visit us at lbnt.com. You're only a click away. So if you need to borrow money, remember, we are just a click away. It's easy to apply online at lbnt.com. And all decisions are made locally. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. If you're looking for a great selection and a great experience for your next Harley-Davidson, come on down to Mount St. Harley-Davidson here in Del Barton, West Virginia. We have new 2023 models in stock and ready for delivery. Special financing available. Or choose pre-owned with one of the largest inventories in the tri-state area with great low prices. Visit our showroom filled with licensed Harley-Davidson apparel and more. Don't write that check until you check with us, Mountain State Harley-Davidson, 61 Priest Bottom Road, or visit us online at mountainstatehd.com. Welcome back, everybody. We are back here. Joe Cantor, Coach May, Daryl McCoy on the call here as we have Huntington High traveling the Spring Valley for your Timberwolf baseball action here as uh, Joe Cantor, it looks like, uh, going to be here on the mound today will be Brody Spencer. Yeah, Spencer so far on the season don't have all the complete stats. 1.62 earn run average. Allows a little bit over a hit an inning. Strikeouts to walks ratio nearly 2 to 1. Only a sophomore. And he will do battle against the first baseman Tavion Wilson to lead off the contest. And Daryl, it's uh, 320 down the lines and left and right and 375 to straightaway center field. Yeah, and guys, this first inning is brought to you by Maddox Law Office. Nice pitch straight down the middle there. Yeah, the Timberwolves, they won the other night against Riverside 6-4. to four. Dropped a 4-2 decision to Hurricane. There's another breaking ball, swing and a miss. Nothing into the count. You know, in class, AAA, Hurricane, uh, a factor uh, for a deep run. There's a drive in the deep left center field. That's going to split the gap, and that should be a double. Filling the ball was the center fielder, Grant Stratton, but that was just a rope in the left center field, and that's a leadoff double for the Highlanders. In the box for Huntington. Shortstop, number two, David. But, you know, in class AAA, no particular order. Bridgeport's always a factor. Morgantown, Martinsburg only with one loss. Uh, Hurricane been highly uh, recognized this season. So, you know, that 4-2 loss the other night by Huntington, that's not a bad loss. And who was that to? That was to Hurricane. That was Huntington. Losing. Okay. So no, that's no, not that's a bad not a bad loss, loss at all. There's the hitter, David Robinson, the shortstop. Looked like he was squaring the bunt that time to try to get that runner over to third base. Corner infielders playing in. Takes the bunt attempt back. Pitch was outside for a ball. So the first baseman, Sam Booth, is playing on the edge of the grass. The third baseman, Harold is having to play even with the bag because the runner, Wilson, is in scoring position after a leadoff double. Here comes the 2-0 pitch, and that's a fastball. Just missing 3-0. and uh, Joe Kinzer, I, I was talking earlier. I said I, I would say about 75 to probably 85% of these kids probably played through Little League together on the field. Oh, right absolutely. Now. I mean, they're that close together, so – you can't you can't pay no attention to records and what happened last week. Taking all the way three and one. Usually you'll see the fastball here if he gets if Robinson here's an interesting scenario if he says you know hey I think the pitch is going to be right here let's see if he'll swing away. Here comes the three one fastball, chopper to short, the runner, play at third. Nice. They nice. have him. Good job there by David Robinson fielding it, throwing it over to, uh, excuse me, that's uh, Cole Ferguson throwing it over to Harold. That's going to be six to five on the force out. Now batting number nine. Brian Did a good job Robinson. getting the tag down on him, getting the lead runner, scoring three out of the way. 
This is Brian Robinson, the center fielder. And that was bad base running there. Pickoff move nearly got him. Mm. A ball hit to the left side, runner of Sega base. You, you kind of hold right there and see if the play's going to go to first before you you uh, you try to advance to third. That's a huge out for the Timberwolves. You'd, you'd much rather have guys on first and second than a guy, you know what I mean? Right. Snap throw, close, not in time. So, because Spencer was wild, guys, when they were trying to bunt the first two times and had to put the bat back, it was really advantageous for him. Missing just low, 2-0. and oh. Man, beautiful, beautiful evening for high school baseball. It sure is. Uh, not too hot, not too cold. I mean, it, it's been perfect weather all day. Popped up a mile out of play. Two and one will be the count, and you know the concession stands are <laughs> uh, getting fired up, doing a lot of business today. Oh, yeah, they got them cheese sticks. Runner at first, one down, top of the first inning, no score. Spencer looks in, a 2-1 pitch, swung on, and it's Booth. He's going nice. to pick it. Taps nice the play by Sam Booth. Was it, it was foul, though. Did they call it foul? Yes. But it's still yet a nice play. Yeah. Heads up play. So the runner go back to first, two balls, two strikes. He was right on that bag, and that was just foul. Spencer looking in at the 2-2 two -two pitch, swung on, fouled off to the left, and we'll have another 2-2 two -two count. Um, man, Spring Valley does a tremendous job with their field. I know that. It's beautiful. Runner from first is going. Pitch is outside. Throw down is going to go into center field. That's a stolen base. And the count is going to be full. That was a good pitch to throw on. Yeah, just let it get away from him. Smith did. Smith usually pretty steady there. So we'll have a payoff pitch to Brian Robinson. One down runner at second base. Spencer. And that's going to be drilled down the right field line. Right fielder giving chase, and it's going to go out of play. Good hustle there by Ethan Fraley. But, gentlemen, we'll just do it all over again. James Smith flashing the signs. Spencer. Ball four. Lost him. That was a good at bat there by Robinson. It was. Uh, good patience. This brings up the third baseman, Jacob Hale. So one down runners at first and second. Just think the bases would be loaded if it wasn't for that 6-5 force out at third base. Octavion Wilson. And, you know, Spring Valley got in the jam early on the other night against Riverside, too. Joe was a, a kid by the name of Aaron George. He hit one to the softball press box. I mean, he crushed it. And after the first inning, it's like the, the lights came on, they came alive, and it was – I mean, they're, they were a machine. But early on, they struggled a little bit. Spencer's, he's fell behind nearly every batter. That's 2-0 oh, runners. Second, that's going to be a stolen base. Uh, Ball go goes to left field. And we have our first run of the game as moving up to second base will be Robinson. Robinson, or that's Brian Robinson. Right David Robinson scores. One ball, one run, one out. One man on. And our first error of the game for Spring Valley. That's good heads up base running by 
Hunnick been going for the steal, throw, got away. Good recognition to get a, get a run across the plate. Spencer behind the count, 2-0. and oh. Taking all the way was Jacob Hale, 2-1. and one. Now we're going to have a little bit of a meeting of the minds on the mound. As you see there, that's uh, Coach Pratt. You know, Coach Pratt, usually when he comes out, he means business. And the uh, head coach, Austin Pratt, he's going to come out and try to calm him down. As uh, it's, it's been tough. You know, the bats have been active here early on for the Highlanders. And, guys, here's, here's, the, here's the thing, okay? I mean, it don't matter if it's the major league level, you know, especially, you know, the high school level. As long as you put the bat, the ball in play, you know what I mean? You put pressure on the defense. A strikeout is the worst out that you can, you know, of course, it don't take rocket scientists. But when you're striking out, you're not putting pressure on the defense. And you can't defend base on balls. Here comes the 2-1. That's a breaking ball and just fighting it off as hell. Now to count even at 2-2. Two and two. You're right, Joe. If, if you're a batter, you just want to put the ball in the field somewhere. Make them make plays, all right? Absolutely. And if you're a pitcher, you want to throw strikes. You want them to hit. I mean, it, it's a – baseball's a game where you depend on a lot of other people. I'll put it that way. Breaking ball, and that's going to be out of play off to the right. Fraley just looks over. And we'll do it again. It's, it's hard to take and uh, dominate a baseball game individually. And I tell you, the Highlanders in this top half of the first inning, they've done an excellent job of, of extending at bats. They have. Fastball just missing high and away. Now we're going to have a full count three and two. Here comes the payoff pitch, just missing ball four. That's the second walk of the inning. And here's the thing. I know that some of the Spring Valley fans are moaning and groaning over there, but when you're behind the count consistently so far since uh, uh, Spencer has, you're not going to get that borderline pitch. No. You throw four or five shots in a row, you probably Patrick get that call. Kinson. This will bring up the right fielder, Patrick Kinson. Top of the first. Runners on first and second, one run already in, one away. That's Patrick Hanson. And that's a first pitch taken for a strike. Hanson looked like he was going to try to bunt that time. Booth is playing even with the grass at first base. Squaring to bunt, bunts and foul, nothing into the count. Coach, do you think they're going to lead the bunt on? or? I think it's swing away now. 0-2. Oh I'm, I'm not – I mean, like I said, I'm not the biggest baseball guy, but you got an open base, you got a guy on second. I'm not sure why you're bunting anyway. Anything in the outfield it just about advances him. Check swing, staying alive is Henson. 0-2 oh the count. I might not be a big baseball guy, but I knew he was swinging there. Well, you put the bunt down again. That makes the defense. It forces them to make a play. Make you never play. know might what make it a what season, would happen. Right? Yeah. Here comes a no two. Spencer needing a strikeout. Fastball just missing. One and two. That was a pretty pitch there. The uh, a little high. The Tw already twenty six pitches thrown in this first inning. Like you said, Huntington doing a, a good job of extending at bats and getting the pitch they want and a pitch they can handle. And again, you know, you're not going to get that borderline call when you've been wild this in, in this first half inning. Here comes another 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Two outs. Runners remain on first and second. Bradley Johnson, his counterpart. At the plate. Now the plate, pitcher, number eight. 
There you see the uh, runner still on second there, getting a good lead off. And that pitch is taken in there for a strike. And if Spencer can get out of this first inning with only one run. He done big, right? I, I mean. Oh, he's painting. He's painting now. 0-2. That was his 30th pitch of the first inning. You know, sometimes just like it takes a shooter a while to find his range, sometimes I think it takes a pitcher a couple guys to find the plate and so find for, the strike zone. So for Huntington, one run on one hit, one error, and they strand a runner on base. Huntington one, Spring Valley coming to bat. It's high school baseball on the D&D Sports Network. Back here at Spring Valley High School, we got Timberwolf baseball as the Timberwolves trail the Huntington Highlanders 1-0 here at the bottom of the first. Want to thank Robertson Signs and Graphics, Maddox Law Office, Great American Realty, Wayne County Youth Soccer League, Trace Hermanos Nunez, OVP Health, Realty Exchange, Skyscape by David Muirs, Renacan, Mosser Apartment Rentals, Greenleaf Environmental Services, CK Florist. Also want to thank Davis's place, JDV flooring. Ethan Fraley leading off, hitting 465 for the Timberwolves. On the mound is Bradley Johnson. So from in the outfield from left to right, it's Jackson Hatfield, Brian Robinson, Patrick Henson. Third base is Jacob Hale. Shortstop, David Robinson. At second is Cash White. First is Tavion Wilson. And that's a fly ball in the center field. And back a couple of steps is Brian Robinson, two pitches and one down. That was, a, that was absolutely a rope. Just hit right at him. In the box for the Timberwolves. And Let's this will bring up now three, Cam, Cam Perdue. Purdue. Purdue batting 363 on the year. First pitch just outside for a ball. Spring Valley averaging 14 runs a game over the last four contests. Been on a tear, Joe Kenza. An absolute tear. 19-1, 17-1, 10-0, 17-4. 2-0 -0 -0 pitch. Outside for a ball, 3-0 the count. You can see the score on the Blackhawk Mining scoreboard, top right-hand corner of your screen, and uh, we got the score wrong up there. It's 1-0 right now, Huntington. I 
And that's going to be a four-pitch walk. And if you're wondering, can Purdue, he has three stolen bases on the season. Garrett Wagner at the plate. 408 batting. 18 runs batted in, five doubles, a triple, and two home runs. Five in a row is missed by Bradley Johnson. We've seen uh, Wagner go yard. Uh, Wa Wagner's got a big bat. As Johnson winds up. And that's going to be foul. Almost caught by the coach down there. Nice play. Trying to nice stab at it. Uh, Barehand. Pedro Ledger said, how about you, Joe Kinzer? Good old Pedro. Guys, hit that like and share button for us. Get these numbers up for these boys. When they go home, rewatch this. They want to see you on there cheering them on. Runner first. He delayed. Now he's going to go down after the ball got away from the catcher. Good ones. Nice job. Throw not in time. Stolen base again here. When they go home, rewatch this. They want to see you on there cheering them on. Runner first. He delayed. Now he's going to go down after the ball got away from one nothing here in the bottom half of the first inning. And that's going to be hit in the center field. Back a couple of steps as Brian Robinson. He'll make the catch. No advancement of the runners. That's two's been hit on a rope to Robinson. Quickly, two down for Brody Spencer. Uh, Ro Robinson's got two outs and haven't moved in the five steps, right? Absolutely. Spencer batting 444 on the season, four doubles, 14 RBIs. I tell you, Pedro Ledger's everywhere. Yes. You don't know where he's at. No. Ledger. Yep. Said we grew up with him and Joe Kinzer. Nice stop there by Goodwin. Keep the runner a second. I ain't there. McCoy's calling you and Pedro. Oh, that's what I'm well, hearing, Joe Kinzer. Well, <laughs> Pedro's not. Maybe I am. <laughs> I am. Pedro's young at heart, man. I tell you, here comes the 1 0. That's going to be oh, hit in the left field. Left fielder coming yeah. on towards near the line. That's nice Jackson play. Halffield. So for Spring Valley, they will strand one runner, one complete. Huntington one, Spring Valley nothing. High school baseball on the D&D Sports Network. If you're injured in a car wreck, don't delay. Give me a call today, Justin Markham. Here at Markham Law Office, we will fight for you. Don't settle for a handshake and a small check from the insurance companies. Give us a call. Don't take on the big insurance companies alone. We will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Here at Markham Law Office, you're more than a client. Your family, and we take care of family. Give me a call, Justin Markham, attorney at law. Looking for a new health care provider? Come see us at Tug Valley Wellness Clinic. We take all patients from the ages two and up. Our staff has over 30 years of medical experience. We do everything from DOT physicals, wellness exams, adult and child walk-in visits, and more. Call us today at 304-236-3601 and reach us Monday through Friday. Unfortunately, water, mold, or fire damage can happen to you. Restoration One of Southern West Virginia is available 24-7 to help take the stress out of your mess. Our primary goal is to respond and restore your property back to normal as quickly and safely as possible. When disaster strikes, Restoration One is your go-to cleanup crew. Save our number now in case you need us later. Whether the job is big or small, give Restoration One a call. 304-443-4959. We're back here at Spring Valley High School. We got Huntington Highlanders leading the Spring Valley Timberwolves 1-0 as we head into the top of the second inning. Coach May, Joe Kinzer, Daryl McCoy on the call with Max, Matt, and Tristan on the production as well as our guy Charlie in the booth. Spencer did an excellent job of uh, getting out of the first inning with only one run allowed, but he threw 32 pitches, so 
for pitch economy sake, you, if you're a Spring Valley fan, you'd like to see him uh, have a very low pitch inning. Uh, Joe Kim, I think it, uh, up until that pitch there, he had thought, thrown five or six strikes in a row. Absolutely. So he, he's starting to find his zone, find his rhythm. And that's going to be a looper in the right center. And laying out for it was Stratton. He gambled and loses. Ball's going to go behind him. And that's going to be, in as many innings, a leadoff double for Huntington. Great hustle by Stratton out there. Just couldn't get to it in time. In the box for Huntington, second baseman. This will bring up the eighth hitter, the second baseman, Cash White. White. I mean, Stratton, he did a, you know, that was good hustle by him, just the laying out for it, just trying to make the, the diving catch. Well, it was. Cash White digging in there. Huntington stranded two runners in the top half of the first. A little sneaky base running there by Huntington. It about went. Runner of the first baseman charging with Sam Booth and the bunt attempt. Bat was pulled back. One no the count. Let me tell you one time, Spencer, don't waste any time on the mound. One and one. Huntington trying to manufacture that runner over to third base. Tavion Wilson, who led off the game with a double, is on deck. Swinging away, and that's going to be a liner to sh short. Double play ball. <laughs> Double Great play, six play. unassisted. Huge play. Great play. Heads up. and you, you, That's just one of those things. Darrell, he hit it right at the second baseman. Now batting, catcher number 14. And Sam Booth, Booth, who's probably about 40 feet. Or shortstop, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sam Booth, the first baseman, who's about 45 feet away, is like, oh, my gosh, he's actually swinging away now. This brings up Xavier Goodwin. He's the catcher. He's ahead of the count, 1-0. Base is empty, two down. Huntington leading, 1-0 here in the top of the second. 1-1 one one the count. Pitch number 41 coming for Spencer. Just missing two and one. Spring Valley will go up to a class 4A next year. Be one of the smaller 4A quad A schools in West Virginia. And he's behind the count three and one. He's a pitch away from walking his third batter this contest. Counts now full. Regardless if Goodwin gets on base or not, for Huntington, they'll have the leadoff hitter in the third inning. There's his foul to the right field. That's going to go back and feed the fishes in the pond over there. <laughs> Uh, that one upon Monday was down here. It looked like Lake Erie down there, didn't it? Darryl McCoy. It did. The, uh, it flood, must have flooded over here. Comes another payoff pitch. Rung him up. That's the third strikeout for Spencer. For Huntington, three up, three down, although they did have one base hit. Heading it to the bottom of the second, Highlanders one, Timberwolves nothing. Come visit the Huntington Ale House, where you get the best steak, burgers, and brews in the Mountaineer State. It's an all-American steakhouse voted the number one mac and cheese in West Virginia. We serve brunch all day. 48 draft beers on tap with the state's best craft beer selection. Half-price happy hour with half-price on selection appetizers, drafts, and cocktails from 3 to 6 p.m. And again, 9 p.m. to close. The Huntington Ale House is also open to hosting events and parties in our upstairs section. Give us a call at 304-522-2537 or contact us via HuntingtonL.com. We look forward to seeing you. 
if you was pushed out of the area because of loss of work in the coal industry, look no longer. Jim Marr is here for you. Jim Marr is now hiring for all positions in the coal field. Stop by their offices in Logan, West Virginia or in Willing, West Virginia and apply today. Back here at Spring Valley High School, you see the folks out there hoping to catch a home run ball, Coach May, as right now, Spring Valley hoping to hit one as they are behind on the scoreboard 1-0 to the Huntington Highlanders. Well, I want to thank Coach May, Joe Kinder, Daryl McCoy on the call with Matt, uh, Max and our good friend Tristan on the production. Charlie in the booth with us. Yeah, they got the best seats in the house out there, Daryl McCoy. They're a, is a fender. Perks, perks stuff out there waiting, like you said, for a home run ball. Yep, that's exactly what they're doing. Who we got on the in the batter's box here, Darrell McCoy? I can't see a number. Sam Booth. Sam Booth. See, the Spring Valley just needs some runners right now. Needs some needs some base runners. They hit the ball well the first inning. Just seemed like everything they hit was right at somebody. And sometimes that happens in this game. Cracked one to shortstop. Going to be a play at first. Nice play by the shortstop here. Yeah, that was six, three on the on the play. Quickly, one down. Now in the box for the Timberwolves, number ten. This brings up now Jonah, Jonah Harold, the third baseman. Yeah, like I said, Spring Valley's making good contact. They just hit it right at Huntington defenders right now. Pitch missing, 1-0 the count. Bradley Johnson painting the corner, outside corner with that breaking ball there, 1-1. One one. Good look at Bradley Johnson. He's, he's winding up. And that's going to be a base hit in the left field. Mm -hmm. So Spring Valley, you know, they are aggressive on the – base pass this year so it's going to be a one out single for the Timberwolves. Now batting for the Timberwolves designated hitter number 20 Parker Phillips. Now I can tell you one thing our boy uh, our boy Jake's upset he's missing this at bat the uh, he's a big Parker Phillips fan. Yeah Parker Phillips. Oh yeah he uh, Parker Phillips did have a big triple the other night Darrell McCoy. Yes he did he was the Mingy Beef Jerky player of the game. Ooh, a little high there. About took his head off on that one. Here comes the 1 0 pitch. And that's right. going to be a base hit opposite field in the right center, rounding second and staying at second. So the Timberwolves will have runners, two runners on, with only one out. Okay, you guys, you can see the score on uh, Blackhawk Mining scoreboard, top right-hand corner of your screen. Number 22 we also want to thank this uh, inning is brought to you courtesy of South Huntington Animal Hospital. Right now, Spring Valley threatening, starting to make some noise with their bat, and got and got Grant Stratton up here, who's a really good hitter. out there the uh, you gotta keep an eye on Jonah Harold the uh, he does not care to take a base as you see him there getting a large lead off and there he is straight yeah. made me look like I knew what I was talking about there Darrell McCoy he did and he's gonna tag up I tell you right now I have a beautiful throw from the center fielder right there now that's going to load the bases here, Joe Kinzer, as uh, you got okay, three so Timberwolves. It's lock box one on the base. In the, in the combinations, P-O-L-T. 
P, P is on Paul. Yes. Juice here at Darrell McCoy. Here yes. we go. Yeah, the you see. Base is juice. Spring Valley one out. If he gets anything, it's going to push a run in, and yeah. uh, that's what the Timberwolves need right now. Coach Pratt and uh, the crew praying for a run here. I was just talking about what a good hitter Grant Stratton is. He made me look good there. I like it. It takes a lot to make you look good, Coach. It doesn't happen very <laughs> often, but he did it. Stratton had a six RBI game hey, listen, the other night. Stratton is a good baseball player, period. We, we have come to figure this out right there on McCoy. Uh, he's unbelievable. The uh, big fan of Stratton. That's going to be a hit in the deep center field, and it's going to score two runs. That is going to maybe Look score here. three. Look here, Parker Phillips. He's about to run him down. No, oh. that's Stratton. Looky there. Ah. Base is clearing double. As you've seen them all pushing the come in there, and uh, he about caught Parker Phillips there running uh, him down. Yeah, Stratton just about passed Phillips down the third baseline. He stepped on it maybe a step and a half after Phillips. Nice job there by the Wolves running the bases. You're going to see a mountain visit here. As Coach is talking to him, and uh, you know that that was a uh, three-run bomb. There puts the Timberwolves up three to one on the Huntington Highlanders. Here, he's going to leave him in here. I don't blame. Him. I like I like I like a coach that will uh, let his pitcher fight through a little adversity. Well, as Joe was talking long ago. You know, the pitcher's done his job. He he's throwing strikes. At Spring Valley just doing a good job with their bats right now and hitting it in the gaps, which. A lot of baseball, I mean, is, is just taking what they give you, I think, I, not trying to force anything. And Spring Valley's bats, we know, has been absolutely hot. To score like they've been scoring. Hello. So five, I'll be Fraley there tomorrow take strike and one. Jackson, yep. okay? they're, 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 they close at 5 o'clock. Yes. They're not now. They're not open on Sunday. There you see. Ooh, I, and that one snipped I, the I, thread I will, there. When I come uh, down yeah. tomorrow, I'll, I'll yeah. give it to uh, Jackson, okay? And no, Fraley no, never no, moved. No. He, it, never flinched. And oh. runner going, base hitter is a nice hitting. Nice job. Yep. He's got to go back, though. Stolen base don't count. As Fraley will go to first base on the hit batsman. Good job by our camera guy there. Hit by a pitch. Down in the box for Spring Valley. Number three. Left fielder Cam Purdue. There's Cam Purdue. And you see the coach talking to the official there right now disagreeing with something. Like he, I think he's saying that Fraley stepped into it, but he didn't. I mean, he just had his arm. Or it didn't look like to me he did. I'm not an umpire. Players are going to come in and uh, mountain visit as you uh, see the umps talking it over, too. I'll tell you another one. Ken Purdue's got dynamite in his bat, too. They always say, uh, Darrell McCoy, that Dynamite comes in small packages. Cam Purdue is proof of that. It absolutely yeah. is. And he he can smoke a baseball for sure. He packs a big bat. Here comes the pitch, and it's taken outside for a ball, 2-0 oh the count. Now for two, look in the back. As you've seen second baseman uh, rushing back to second base there. Didn't want to get stranded in between uh, players there as uh, Cam Purdue. Show him bunt. Yeah. Yeah, he walked and stole the base. And that's going to be outside for a ball. 
That's the 47th pitch thrown by Johnson. Uh, jo Johnson's a uh, he, – he's been in a – got himself in a jam here this inning a little bit, Joe. Uh, but I'm like, there. I like when they let them work out of it. Spring Valley with three runs already in on four base hits. Purdue head of the count now, two and one. And that one hit him. Yeah. I see Purdue go to first here as that loads him up again. Bases loaded, and that's going to bring none other than Garrett Wagner. And this is not the, the guy you want coming up, I can promise you that. No, he flew out to center field. Well, have we got a, in uh, his first at bats. Have we got a tape on how tall Huntington's coach is? Look at this guy. He is six eight. Who is Huntington's coach? I'll have to find out. He is about six seven, six eight. Would you agree with that, Joe Ken? Charlie, yes. you know who Huntington's coach is? And we're gonna have it looks like a relief pitcher for Huntington. Sam Boone and uh, listen with that height they might as well be Daniel Boone yeah. uh, I bet he could absolutely throw a baseball like hard <laughs> Randy Johnson you know yeah. Randy Johnson the big unit yeah. about 6'9 that baseball looks like a golf ball in his hands so we'll see who the new getting on uh, Huntington's roster Evan Childress is going to be the new pitcher on the mound. Well, looky there, you see Garrett Wagner. So, Evan Childress. Uh, yeah, Joe, I know you ain't got to see him as much as us, but this young man right here, second baseman Garrett Wagner, kid is a stud. So, there'll be changes for Huntington, so I can tell you that the new pitcher will be Childress. You know, things just fell apart for Huntington here in the bottom half of the second inning. I mean. Well, you know, Spring Valley was making good contact in the first inning. Just got unlucky in the placement of the ball. Hit it right at Huntington defenders. And now they're, they've are they got a couple to fall in the gaps. And the more you hit, the more the pitcher struggles, it seems, right? Absolutely. Uh, Joe, I'm still learning this baseball game anyway. And uh it, basketball guy. Basketball and football. I like right. football a lot, too. But now, I'm with Daryl, and basketball is probably my favorite to watch. Number four, Garrett Wagner. Always Garrett Wagner at the plate. I got my start. PA announcing when I was a senior in high school. Roger Gertz gave me the opportunity to PA announce Logan. And, I, and to this day, I'll, I'll be honest with you, if it wasn't for Roger Gertz letting me PA announce Logan baseball, I would have never got the job on the radio at Coal Country. Oh, wow. I mean, I'll, I'll just be honest with you. That's going to be a hit to left field. Nice, That's going to be out nice. number two. No advancement. Nice day out there in that outfield. Brody Spencer flew out the left in the last inning. Down the box for Spring Valley, pitcher number zero. Brody. David Miller, Spencer. the voice of, of Cole Country, was yeah. uh, PA announcing a uh, the state little league baseball tournament, and uh, and and Coach Gertz gave me that gig, and uh, that's that's how, and there was a, a a midnight DJ spot opening up at Cole Country, and that's how I got on. Uh, they used to have the state little league baseball tournament at Logan every year, correct? Uh, not every year, but they would rotate it, and Logan would be one of them. And uh, I remember one year we went to uh, Mullins, uh, we're around Pineville maybe, uh, to uh, what's it called over there? Twin Springs or Twin Falls? Twin Falls. Twin Falls yeah. over there and play. 
So his base is still loaded. You have Ferguson at third, Fraley at second, Purdue at first, two down. Three runs already in in the inning. Childers come in in a bad spot, really. Let's see if he can get them out of it. And the pitch is going to go back to the backstop. Runner from third coming in. He will <laughs> score. That's going to allow a second runner to score, yeah. and you'll have to charge an error on the catcher. Scoring was Ferguson and Fraley. Purdue's at second. And you see them celebrating over there. A lot to celebrate. Coach Pratt with the Timberwolves. You got to be happy as he looks at the scoreboard. They're up four, five to one on the Huntington Highlanders right now. Guys, if you're tuning in, you're watching tonight's game courtesy of Robertson Signs and Graphics, Maddox Law Office, Great American Realty, Wayne County Youth Soccer, Trace Hermanos Nunez, OBP Health, Realty Exchange, and Skyscape by David Muris. Spencer's the 10th batter here in this inning. Spencer's got some insurance runs to deal with, to work with here whenever we get to the third inning. Children keep trying to hit that inside corner. And I can tell you this from watching Spring Valley, they're not going to back off the plate no matter how close you throw it. Cranks that one out to left field, but it looks like it's going to stop a little short. He dropped it. it. Yes, he did. Wow. A run will score. That's the reason why you keep on a truck, and then that's going to be an E7. That's the second error of the inning. Let's, let's go back and let's see if we can find out what happened there on that one. That one out to left field, but it looks like it's going to stop a little short. He dropped it. Yes, he did. Wow. I think he started to jog off the field before he secured it. Well. First baseman, number five, Sam. Just like a wide receiver, didn't look it in. I agree with that. Six runs already in. Runner at first base, Sam Booth. He bounces short to start this inning. Now, if I'm not mistaken, these two teams, did they play earlier in it? Yeah. They won 13-1 or uh, 12-2. 12-2. Uh, spring, yeah, season opener. Uh, Look at the lead, uh, as you see him there at first. He's, uh, every time he's trying to make sure the pitcher's aware, he's over there. There you see him stepping out. Booth ahead of the count, 2-0. Chopper to third, fielded, go to short route, in time. Nice. Plenty of damage is being done. Six runs on four hits. Two errors, one runner left on base, two completes. Spring Valley, six, Huntington, one. This is high school baseball on the D&D Sports Network. But out. Booth ahead of the count, 2-0. Chopper to third, fielded, go to short route, in time. Nice. Plenty of damage is being done, six runs. We're back here. We want to thank our wonderful sponsors. Robertson Signs and Graphics, Maddox Law Office, Great American Realty, Wayne County Youth Soccer, Trace Hermanos Nunez, OBP Health, Realty Exchange, Skyscape by David Muris, Renacan, Mosser Apartment Rentals, Greenleaf Environmental Services, CK Flores, Davis's Place, JDV Flooring, South Huntington Animal Hospital, Kenneth Patrick, an attorney at law, American Legion post 93 and then want to thank Booten Realty Service. Guys, make sure uh, you also thank our D&D sponsors, Huntington Ill House, Blackhawk Mining, Jim Mars Services, as well as Justin Markham, attorney at law, Tug Valley Wellness Clinic, Restoration One. We'll get you back uh, to 100% if you've been struck by mother nature damage, uh, whether it's fire or flood. But as we're returning here, Joe Kinzer, we, uh, as you look on the scoreboard, it is Spring Valley leading 6-1 to one over the Huntington Highlanders. Tavion Wilson, 1-2-3, due to hit off of Spencer here in the top half of inning number three. 32-pitch first inning, only threw 15 in the second. 
in the first pitch taken for a strike by Wilson. Leadoff double to begin the game. He was thrown out at third base. Guys, continue to hit that like and share button. The ND Sports Network is an interactive broadcast. Let us know where you're watching from, who you're rooting for. If you got comments, questions, leave them in the comment section. You can watch us on Facebook or dndsports.com as well as our YouTube channel. So as Coach May, Joe Kinzer, Daryl McCoy in the booth with Max, Matt, Tristan on the production. Joe Kinzer, Daryl McCoy, I want to point out something. I think Tavion Wilson is the first guy that I have seen since we've been doing these baseball games to not have on batting gloves. That's true. I mean. That tells me he just, he just he's showing his man card there. I, I agree. Yeah. The uh, As we're sitting here, we got Justin Morgan Curley says up. way to go, uh, way to go P. And then we got Mackenzie Allen Michael says, what's up, Joe? What's up, Little Bear? That's his nickname. Four, now he is, Spencer has struck out four of the last six batters. Uh, he's been on fire since the end of the first inning, really. David Robinson, first pitch taken for a strike. He'd reached base on a 6-5 force out, and he stole the base. I tell you, Mac, he's a, he's a, volunteer firefighter back home in Upshur County and he's he goes on a lot of those emergency calls swinging a miss one and two really do thank him and uh, his counterparts the Adrian volunteer fire department because they go out on EMS calls wrecks fires and everything absolutely definitely want to thank our emergency services whether it's uh, fire emergency or uh, or police the uh, can't do it without them he has now K'd five of the last seven batters, including three in a row. Brian Robinson, he him, walked. It took him a minute in, his fir in that first inning to find the zone, but once he found the – he got himself in a groove here and throwing the ball really well. Well, I tell you, if he can get out of this inning within the next four pitches, that, that'll be around 60 pitches for three innings. And, again, he threw 32 in the first. 2-0 the count. He's gave up one run, two base hits, and both hits have been doubles. And that's going to be a foul. Booth grabs it nevertheless. I'm not Darrell. Spencer works quickly, too. He doesn't take a lot of wasted motions, not a lot of wasted movements. He's ready to pitch when the batter steps in the box, and I like that. And the defense likes that, too. Not a lot of weight, not rim. Swing and a miss. Strike, uh, strike away from striking out the side of Spencer. Just a bit outside. Bob Uecker. Bob Uecker, yeah. Major League. Got to got to love it. Just a bit outside. Uh, one of the greatest all-time baseball oh, movies I'll, ever. I, I tell you. That's going to be lifted oh, out of play. It out to right field. No, he called it. Did he catch it? Yeah. So, Three Fraley eight. makes the catch. Go ahead. Three up, three down for the Wolves. Back in business. Yes, sir. We're going to take a quick break. Be right back here on the D&D Sports Network. We'll be oh, lifted out of play. It. Out to right field. No, he called it. Did he catch it? Yeah. So, three Fraley up. makes the catch. Go ahead. Three up, three. Start the new year off right by making your health a priority. Kentucky Mountain Health Alliance, Little Flower Clinic, Quantum Healthcare, and East Kentucky Chiropractic can help you do just that. We have a great staff of professionals offering a variety of services like medical, dental, behavioral health, math program, case management, chiropractic, radiology, and lab testing. Little Flower Clinic offers free transportation for Perry County patients. Call to make an appointment, 487-9505, Quantum Healthcare, 436-0711, and East Kentucky Chiropractic, 487 8255. Are you ready to join the future of coal mining? 
At Blackhawk Mining, we are a national leader in the production of metallurgical coal with a foundation built on a strong safety culture and an unmatched work ethic. We're not just co-workers, we're a family, and together we create an environment where everyone can thrive and make their mark. We invite you to join our team at Blackhawk Mining as we continue to build on our tradition while empowering the next generation of coal miners. Blackhawk Mining, shaping the future of coal production today. And we are back here at Spring Valley High School. You see the fans right now here in full force, packed house for this crosstown rivalry matchup between Huntington High and Spring Valley. Right now, it's the Timberwolves up on the Highlanders. Six to one. Coach May, Joe Kinzer, Daryl McCoy in the booth with Max, Matt, and Tristan out in the field. Also, want to thank our guy Charlie on the PA, the best uh, best announcing guy in the business. First pitch swinging was Harold. It's popped up in the infield. Second baseman under it makes the catch. One pitch, one out. Nice catch there is. Again, guys, this inning is brought to you courtesy of our friends at OVP Hill. Designated hitter, hitter Parker Phillips. He singled and scored a run in the last inning. Now this kid packs a oh. hammer around with him for a bat. The uh, This young man, coach, if there's any kid that can send this one packing, it's him. Takes first pitch called strike. He is our Castle's jewelry player of the game as he's got the bling bling on. Absolutely. I, I, read a, I read an article once that said baseball players wear chains and stuff to try to distract pitchers and hitters. I, I don't know. I ain't never heard that, but I ain't going to call you a liar. About you, I, I've, I've heard it, and guess what? Uh, I read it somewhere. Now that's going to be lifted yeah. into left center field. That's a gapper. Left fielder coming over, cutting it off where it hit the fence and holds Harold to a uh, long single. Second hit of the game for, or excuse me, second hit of the game for Parker Phillips. I'll tell you right now, that was a, a good play by the left fielder to catch. I mean, because he was coming away from the ball, and that very well could have hit the gap for two bags. You see, now this this is a kid I really like, Grant Stratton. Coach, uh, we've seen him come up with big plays. Uh, oh, yeah. Numerous times over the uh, past five, six games since we've been here in Huntington. He's just an all-around good baseball player. Yeah. A good fielder, good pitcher. Watch him pitch, him a good pitcher. A uh, heck of a pitcher. I mean, he's just a good baseball player. One well, Spring Valley's full of good baseball players, though. Got a ton of talent right now. Taking for a strike. Phillips getting a good lead off there at first. As you see, uh, Phillips trying to let the pitcher know he's there, throw him off his game a little bit. Runner from first going, throw down to second, nowhere mm -hmm. near. No. Stone base. And you know, I, I was having a just in general conversation with Coach Pratt, and we were talking about the transfer portal. He said, I don't know why we don't get any transfers to Spring Valley. He said, all of our kids that we got right now came through the Spring Valley Little Leagues and feeder program. They have zero transfers. He said, we'll just, we'll just do it with Spring Valley kids. I said, you know what, I think that's awesome. No, oh, yeah, if you can do it, homegrown, the, uh, you know, Spring Valley, and i tell you another place I'm very surprised with how they're able to do it with homegrown kids is uh, Lawrence County. Yeah. You know, their kids come from about a 15-mile radius. Uh, Coach, like Coach Pratt said, he said he is a Spring Valley guy, and he, he said we, we don't really go searching for transfers. He, you know, the, of course he wouldn't turn them away, he said, but. Yeah. Ball for it taken. Cause we were we were more talking about the transfer portal in basketball. See Stratton uh, making his way to first there. Spring Valley batter, shortstop, number seven. This Cole brings up Cole Ferguson. Ferguson. Ferguson singled and scored. Ethan Fraley do up next. He's the hitter that had the three RBI double. Here's 
show and bunt and uh, don't be surprised if Phillips don't take off. I would tell, well, I would say a statement, but I'm afraid I get myself in trouble. One over the count. Daryl's intrigued. Yeah, There's man. a bunt. Great it's bunt. Great bunt. Yeah. Nice Throw over first, not in time. It's going to be an infield hit, and the bases are juiced again. Joe, usually if you feel like it's going to get you in trouble, guess what? I go ahead and say it. I, uh, yeah. Go ahead and say uh, it. Uh, yeah. the, the, I respect the schools that say, we don't get no transfers. We don't get no transfers. Well, the first thing out of my mouth, I always say, well, you wouldn't turn them down, would you? <laughs> well, no. Well, no. He said he, well, he, said he wouldn't turn them down. He said yeah. You know, but he just said they didn't actively go looking for it. Listen, I I, I love Spring Valley Athletics. I do too. Oh, I, do too. I, do, I do too. I do too. They do it right here, man. I mean, you take it. Look at the football players that this school puts out is insane. You know the uh, just had a kid commit the UPAC what day before yesterday. We found out about yeah, it Monday. Ethan, Ethan Null. Null. Yeah. So the uh, again one of the first. Uh, you know, we just added Spring Valley to our coverage area. Uh, Seemed like. And that's going to be a rope in the left field. That'll be a base hit. Runner will stay at third base. It's now 7 to 1. Unofficially, that is the uh, fourth RBI of the game for Fraley. Parker Phillips is going to come out and uh, or come across the home plate, score a run, and they're going to make it 7 1. Yeah, Spring Valley, Valley leading Huntington three, Highlander. Cam Purdue. Cam Purdue. Yeah. Cam Purdue. It's been up twice, no official at bat. He has walked, stole the base, was hit, took one for the team, hit by pitch, and scored a run. See Purdue stepping up to the plate there. As and that's going to be a bunt out of play off the, off the screen, nothing on one to count. I mean, does it just me or is these lights flickering in here? I think they are. I'm just making sure, Charlie. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, to reassure me that I am play. not going crazy. <laughs> Charlie giving you play-by-play -play over here. Poltergeist. Yeah. Hey, listen, Charlie's our guy up here. He's my go-to. Everything I need to know, I aggravate hey. him. The corner infielders were charging in, and Purdue swung away out of play, nothing into the count. Guys, hit that lock and chair button. Get these numbers up for these boys as uh, this coming weekend we have the D&D Sports Mountain Showcase. Make sure you everybody makes it out for a great weekend of basketball in Jenkins, Kentucky as we got a lot of kids from Wayne County uh, coming down making a trip and the Huntington area as well. Pitch misses outside one and two. <coughs> You know, Spring Valley's girls basketball program, I'd like to get a couple of them girls to come down because uh, I'm a big fan of them. I covered them a couple of years ago. Talking about uh, a good group of girls basketball players. They got it here at Spring Valley. You caught that strike three. Yeah, I don't think uh, the pitcher thought much of the call. This brings up Garrett Wagner. Garrett Wagner. Now batting second baseman number four. 0 for Garrett. 2. Flew, to, flew out to center. Lined out to right. Uh, or Wag left. Wagner hits the ball well both yes, times he he's has. been up. He just hit it right at people. So. Two down here in the inning. Now bases loaded. You can see it on the Blackhawk mining scoreboard. Top right hand corner of your screen for Garrett Wagner as he steps up to the plate. Here comes the 1-0 pitch from Childers. Swung on in the deep left field. Left fielder coming over towards the line. In the it. foul ground, he'll nice. make the catch. Nice catch by left the left field. fielder. Left fielder out there for Huntington can play a little bit. So that's going to take us to the end of the side here as we're going to have Spring Valley leading 7-1 over the Huntington Highlanders. We'll be right back here with more action on the D&D Sports Network when we return. Here comes the 1-0 pitch from Childers. Swung on in the deep left field. Left fielder coming over towards the line. In the it. foul ground, he'll nice. make the catch. Nice catch.
five strikeouts, no walks. The start before that, he had ten strikeouts and six walks. So right. you know, so you know, it, Spring Valley, you know, they they get the K's, but they also walk a few batters as well. So this, for Huntington right now, this is the perfect opportunity to try to cut into this six-point yeah. deficit, yeah. You're six right. run uh, deficit. Well, you see bases loaded right now on first there. One uh, out. Yeah, and uh, you see runners on every base here uh, for the Highlanders. So this is a tough spot for Montoya to come in. Yeah. And, and I tell you, you know, Coach May, we, we come in, uh, first game we was here, Montoya come up big. He was one of the stars of the game the first time we he ever was. a Spring Valley game. Yeah, I, you're right, Darryl McCoy, I remember that. Now, Cash White at the plate. Remember, his, he's 0 for 1. He tried to bunt a couple pitches and and uh, couldn't execute that. So he swung away, and he hit into that six unassisted double play at short. Yep, you're 100% right. So Montoya towing the rubber now, and he's going to well, step off. There's Cash White. The, uh, he's the catcher for the Highlanders. Save your good one on deck. One down here in the top of the fourth. This would be a huge, uh, huge if Cash White can get a couple runs in here. As right now, you see Spring Valley leading 7 1 over Huntington High here in the bottom of the fourth, or top of the fourth. That's popped up. Uh, and second baseman goes out nice in the play. outfield, and that's going to be second out. So it's all up to the Xavier Goodwin. Goodwin, the nine hitter, he struck out 0 for 1 today. Jenny Roberts, thanks for letting us know about the sound there. Now, who do we got coming up, Joe? Who's at the Xavier Goodwin. Xavier Goodwin. He's 0 for 1 with the strikeout. Now, Huntington High, they just had a uh, – a player that was drafted in the uh, top ten of the NFL draft, right? Darnell Wright. Yeah. Went oh, on yeah, to right, yeah. went on to Tennessee. That's when Dana Hogerson coached the Mountaineers and would not recruit somebody from West Virginia. Hmm. I mean, I saw Darnell Wright play two times at Belfry. That. In in the bowl. Well, they, and and he he was a man child. In the offensive tackle. Oh uh, yes. That's correct. I watched him play at Johnson Central in a scrimmage game, and he was different. He was different. He was a stud. It killed. <laughs> it, it just kills me that why not? Wow. I, I mean, you would think that these schools would want to recruit every in-state kid that they can well, get. Well, two and two the count. Now, well, I, I tell you, both Marshall and West Virginia, they both go after in-state kids. But Dana Hogerson, he would not. No. I tell you, the uh, you know, just like Huntington High produced some big time football talent, nice hit right up the middle, Daryl McCoy. But the shortstop oh. comes over, makes the play, play. six three on the put out. Wow, and that big. that will end the side. Cole Ferguson, yeah, Spring Valley still going to lead here seven to one as we go to a quick commercial break. Be right back on the D and D Sports Network. I tell you, the uh. You know, just like Huntington High produced some big-time football talent. Nice hit. Right up the middle, Daryl McCoy, but the oh. shortstop comes over, makes the play. 6-3 oh, hey. on the put out. I'm Bruce Walters with Bruce Walters Kia in Pikeville, Kentucky. We have the area's largest selection of new Kias and more arriving daily. Come shop us in Pikeville. I guarantee you, you'll find the Kia for you. At Bruce Walters Kia, your new Kia comes with a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Also at Bruce Walters Kia, you'll get free oil changes for life. Finding your new Kia is easy. Come shop us in Pikeville or shop us online at BruceWaltersKia.com. If you was pushed out of the area because of loss of work in the coal industry, look no longer. Jim Mar is here for you. Jim Mar is now hiring for all positions in the coal field. Stop by their offices in Logan, West Virginia or in Willing, West Virginia and apply today.
I'm Bruce Walters with Bruce Walters Key in Pikeville, Kentucky. We have the area's largest. Here we are as uh, you look there at first base, uh, Joe, that is Jacob Hill uh, for the Highlanders. The, uh, the, you know, that was, a, they had their opportunities, Huntington did, to put some runs on the board right. and uh, credit uh, Spring Valley with some great fielding. Now got him, Matt, got his pitcher out of the jam, and the now we're going to enter Spencer. the bottom of the fourth with the T Wolves up seven to one on the Highlanders. Now McCoy, they had the bases loaded with one out, left three stranded. Yeah. So I mean, they had their chance there to cut in this Timberwolves lead. It was an amazing job by the fielders. Cole Ferguson did wow. an excellent job. He, I mean, I thought that was going to sneak through, and that was a lot of uh, ground, he, real estate that the shortstop had to cover. And not only to have the wherewithal to make the throw over the first, just a good all-around baseball play. Daryl McCoy, a successful businessman. I don't know about that. The uh, highly successful just businessman. Just grinding, aren't you, Daryl? Yeah, just grinding. I don't know about successful. Two and one, the count. I tell you right now, he does a lot for Mount Natalie. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. David Jones and Thomas and KJ and everybody. Heck, you, Coach May. If I leave somebody, uh, Barker. Yeah. That's Bradley. Good. Nice Bradley. play at third. Throw over to first, not in time. The, uh, you know, we got one of the best crews. And, uh, you know, I, I always come from the philosophy. Listen, if you want to be successful, surround yourself with good people. And uh, that's, that's what I've had to do. You know, we got legends, Ronnie, Eugene. Uh, Joe Kinzer, Barker, uh, Zach, we got a ton of good announcers. We got producer KJ, uh, Coach May. You know, and it's the fans at home that make it worth it all because they're the ones that give these kids the opportunity, not us. It's our fans and our sponsors. Sam Booth's over two. He's bounced to short and uh, no, yeah, bounced short a couple times. I was telling Darrell on the way down here, Joe, that I was real lucky. I got to work with Barker a lot when I very first started doing it. And man, Barker, he could be on ESPN man, tomorrow. Barker's good. He's, he's really good. 2-0 the count. All right, here's my life lesson, Darrell, after this pitch, buddy. All right? Nothing bad. It won't, uh -huh. You won't kick me off the air, I promise you. I won't get fired. 2-0 pitch. Taking for a strike. All right, you're a businessman, okay? Yeah. So, over my years, all right, if anyone comes up to you and the very first thing they say it's not about the money, guess what? It's, <laughs> it's about, about the, the money. money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's going to third, the second. Not in time. It'll be a stolen base. Yeah. Three and one, the count. T Wolves, they love to run the bases. So what you're saying, Joe Kinzer, somebody comes up and says, now this isn't about the money. They, it's, they're it's, trying to it, pick my pocket. It's about the money, yes. So, okay. Yeah. It's always about well, listen, money. I, I can tell you this in this business: if you're in it for the money, you're in it for the wrong reasons. Exactly. And uh, and the, at the end of the day, if you keep the kids at the forefront, you know the good Lord will take care of you, and I promise you that. Absolutely. Payoff pitch to Sam Booth, the first baseman, looking for his first hit. Timberwolves ahead, seven to one. Cranked it and uh, looks like it's gonna go foul. Well, gotta watch out, check out. Look over there, as you, you see our guy Matthew said that one went all the way to the interstate. Matthew, if one comes toward that camera, buddy, jump in front of it now. <laughs> protect, you gotta protect the equipment at all costs. That's, that's, uh, oh, nice. He got a hold of that one, center field. And he called it nice catch. Runner from second's gonna try to tag the third. They will, there'll be a sack fly. Runners on the corners. No, excuse me, runner at third base. So that's a productive out there. It is. Uh, that's in, not even considered a, a Down the box for your timber uh, like it, it's an out, but it, it doesn't reflect badly on your batting average because it's a sack fly, right? Absolutely, yeah. yes. Okay. Jonah Harold to third baseman, one for two, singled and popped up to the second baseman. Bottom of four. Childers' his pitch outside for a ball. I like this kid right here, Jonah Harold. I do too. 
Uh, and one yeah. of my favorite players on the Timberwolves have been since we started coming, James and Chafes, or James oh. and Chafins. Got him. Yeah. Harold took one for the team on that one, and that's going to bring up the big bat of Parker Phillips. Runners and on the corner, and this is where he shines, Darrell McCoy, when he's got runners on the bags. As I said, you know, he uh, he packs around a hammer. The uh, this young man, he will see him one packing if you leave it float out. Going to get a pitch runner for the Timberwolves. Guys, y'all can hear the wind blowing through our microphones. It's, it's getting pretty nippy now. Oh, we got a pinch runner coming in, Joe. That's number six. Um, Courtesy runner for the T-Wolves. That will be Dylan Robertson. Dylan Robertson. And the junior. It is a pitch runner because the courtesy runner is only for uh, the uh, the catcher and the pitcher. There's the uh, coach going back out to the mound. And here's our boy Charlie playing the Jeopardy theme. Yeah. got to love that. Listen, he, he's the best. Yeah, they pay him the big bucks up here in Timberwolf country. Well, what's your wager that they're taking him out, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> you take a look at Spring Valley's schedule. Tomorrow they travel to Ona to take on Cabell Midland. And then on Friday they will go to Ripley. Saturday play a double dip against Parkersburg and Parkersburg South. And then next Monday at Ashland. Next Tuesday at Hurricane. And then coming up a week from tonight, home against Oak Hill. So they pretty much have games every day. Okay. All right. Uh -oh. Runner from first. He's going to go on down to second base. That's going to be a stolen base. You knew that was going to happen. Runners on second and third. One ball, no strikes, one out. Spring Valley in business again. I want to thank Coach Pratt. Kurt Stratton and uh, all the folks here at Spring Valley for choosing D and D Sports Network as their go-to media outlet. And uh, uh, right now we see the Timberwolves sitting on a comfortable seven-one lead over the Huntington Highlanders. And uh, you've got runners on second and third in scoring position here. Infield playing in all the way around. Parker Phillips two for two, a couple singles, scored two runs, stole a base. He's dro he's drove in a run. Two and one the count. I think it seems like when Phillips comes up big in big spots. The last two games he had. Childers to the plate. Nowhere to put him and a, a ball, another bad ball away from an RBI. So if Spring Valley can play three more this inning and hold uh, Huntington in the top half of the fifth, the game's over. Uh, yeah. Got to be up by 10. I had no, got to play four more, yeah. Four more. That's going to be fouled off. Which I think they have mercy, mercy their last four opponents. Mm -hmm. 10 nothing, 17 1, 19 1, 17 4. Right? Their, four, like their only four losses came during spring break week. No. Uh, where'd they go, spring break? Myrtle Beach? Cabell yeah, that's right, the Cabell Midland yeah. game. Ball four, that's an RBI. Uh, high and on uh, the inside there. No, that wasn't a runner on first, was it? No. That juiced him. Oh, okay. So you're going to have bases loaded come up for Grant Stratton. Two for two, couple singles. Pinch runner at first base. Scored a couple of runs. Joe Kinzer, let me tell you a quick story about Grant Stratton. He came in here after one of the games, I can't remember what game, we did them all, wanting the keys to the golf cart so he could take his grandpa to his truck so he didn't have to walk. That's, so, good, that's a good young I man mean, right there. That, that made me lock him right there automatically. He's raised right. He's raised right, that's right. I tell you, he had, again, one game recently in which he drove in six runs. The uh, don't don't surprise me at all if you've watched the kid play. Here 
comes the 0-1 from Childers. Ooh, on the outside there, and got to watch uh, that third uh, base runner is looking to come home at any mistake here. So you don't do not need a wild pitch here. Good one with an excellent stop there. Counts of one and one. <clears throat> Swung off out off to the right, one and two. And you know, uh, I think Stratton liked that pitch. He just couldn't quite get around on it. Mm -hmm. See a little bit. One ball, two strikes. So Stratton steps up to the plate again. Here comes the pitch. Just missing. Counts even at two. Tell you, Pat, the D and D sports website, man. Sports page has had a lot of content as always, and oh, even more here cool. lately. There's going to be a base board. hits. That's going to score one, and the bases will remain loaded. It's now eight to one. Yeah, the uh, uh, we want to thank our chief writer Bradley Dameron uh, for that. If you guys haven't visited it, you can get up to the now date, the uh, up to minute scores time. and stats on dndsports.com. Uh, if you go at the top, you see our live scoreboard. And I also get great stories on all the uh, action going on around the mountain. Breaking news today, Christy Orem outed at Pikeville. She uh, resigned at Pikeville. Uh, Christy's won, what, three out of the last four regional championships? Yeah, she's won like uh, six or seven. Five out of six. Five out of six. Five out of six. Five Five out of six. Like that. Uh, the only other one, the Lawrence County won one with Kinsley, right? Yeah. Felt. Cole Ferguson, two for two, couple singles. Man, that'd be big right here. But. I was told today that Belfry could possibly name a new head boys basketball coach by maybe middle of next week. Yeah, they uh, they keep pushing it out, and that's what I've heard next week too. Uh, but I uh, just wonder who it's going to be. Uh, uh, Belfry's not known as a basketball school right now, but I think the right person get in there with the right work ethic, you could do big things to high school basketball. The, uh, Pitch just missing two and one. I can tell you this: it's going to take the right person because it's been two decades since uh, since they've been a quality team right. up there. And I agree with that. But yeah, it, uh, there's yeah. some good athletes and some good basketball players that comes out of that area. Yep. You take somebody that will put the time in it, and if they give them a chance to build something there. You got a hold of it. It's going to pop up to left field over there. As he lost it in the lights. He yep. was looking for it the whole time. That's going to be a single. He was looking for it the entire time. I don't ha I don't see it. I don't see it. And that's going to be the ninth run of the game. And that, more importantly, that gets us back around to the top of the order here, guys, as we got Ethan Fraley now, coming up to the plate. Valley. Unofficially two or three in the game. Flying out the center. Then he had a double that drove in three runs, and he had a single that's already drove in one. And, you know, that's got to be demoralizing for your pitcher. He gets him to pop up, and what should be a routine play gets lost in the lights, turns into a run. The 60th district championship one year at Phelps was decided like that, a inside the uh, park grand slam home run because the outfielder lost it in the lights. Right. It's easy to do. I wouldn't want to count. Well, well, we've seen that's twice that outfielder has lost one uh, tonight, yep. and uh, he, so he must have a bad it, angle. It's easy there. to do. I mean, yep. what? Well, well, I think earlier it was the sun he lost it. If you don't see it come off the bat, is the thing. I mean, it's hard to find once you. Here comes the bunt. Nice, nice job. They couldn't get the double play. That's going to score one, but good job there by the first baseman. Scored two. Wow. So they'll get the play at the plate, and then you're going to have a throwing error. 
that allow two runs to score, and it's now. I mean, it's hard to find once you. Here comes the bunt. Nice, nice job. Good job by Wilson, the first baseman, of getting the force out of home. And then they tried to go down to first for the double play and errant throw. Here comes Cam Purdue. He's 0 for 1. He's walked, hit by a pitch. He has struck out. He stole the base, and he has uh, scored a run. So what started out as a phenomenal play, the catcher tried to make a throw down to first and cost them two more runs, actually. So now if Spring Valley can hold in the top half of the fifth, the game's over. Runner from first is going, throw down, oh, he's and off. that's yeah. going to be yeah. offline. And he's going to third. Yeah, that will be another error. Yeah. Uh, nice job there advancing by the runner. Gets all the way to third, and uh, – as he dabs Coach Pratt up over there. You can see the score on the Blackhawk Mining scoreboard, top right-hand corner of your screen, 11 to one. Fifth consecutive contest that Spring Valley has scored double digits. It's pretty impressive from a high school baseball team. I tell you, the, I, I love the aggressiveness of the base runners. Mm -hmm. Coach oh, Pratt, yeah. you know, when they get on base, Coach Pratt's sending them. Yeah, they're they're definitely not just ho hum no. boring to watch. And that's what successful baseball teams do. I mean, the one the successful ones that I've seen in West Virginia and the ones I followed in the 15th region of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, they make I, things happen. Yeah, absolutely, always putting pressure. I mean, some teams didn't have a lot of speed. They had power. Most of them had speed, and they, it was just run and gun. I mean, I guess I can say this now. I'm a Logan High graduate, and he hasn't coached there in a long time. But the running joke was when Tim Murphy was the boys' basketball coach at Logan that Roger Gersh's baseball team was the running gun of Wildcats. <laughs> 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 yep. There comes the 2-2 two -two pitch with two down. Stayed high with that one, and it's now full three and two. He said, guys, hit that like and share button. Get these numbers up here as you're watching the Mountain's number one source for sporting news, the D&D &D Sports Network coverage of Spring Valley Baseball. And here comes a runner home. That was ball four, but the ball got away. Runner. And that's the 12th run of the contest. Runner looking still out there dancing on first, and uh, he's going to stay at first. Let's bring up Garrett Wagoner and got a little meeting of the minds on the mound right now. So five runs already in here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. And in reality, should have been out of the inning. And the Highlanders will be going to their third different pitcher in this game. So, Joe Kinsler, let me get this straight. You run a donut shop, a U-Haul. Oh, I don't. You, uh, my what? company I work for does. So, so you do donuts, U-Hauls, and yeah. gas stations. Yeah, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Well, how about our guy Charlie here? Is he uh, playing another one by the dust? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Queen, baby. Uh, Charlie uh, goes from Chris Stapleton to the Stones to Queen to whatever, whatever you need. Yeah. CCR, I heard CCR in the mix a while ago. I love it. This brings up freshman Caleb Lucas, the third pitcher on the mound. And, and again, for Spring Valley, I mean, they have pretty much, outside of Sunday, a game every day. They've had a lot of rainouts. Huntington coming in six and eight on the year. We'll get you the Highlanders schedule. Of course, uh, tomorrow they play home against George Washington. And then next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they will be home against Boyd County, Cabell Midland, and Parkersburg. Then they'll hit the road for three against Hurricane. They'll play in the Mid-South, uh, not the Mid-South, but the Mountain State Athletic Conference. Mid-South, that, that that's the other, that, that used to be the conference where U-Pike played. And uh, then uh, they will their last two regular season games will be home against Parkersburg South and at Raceland. May 3rd will be their final game. 
I never understood why baseball teams are allowed to play a doubleheader, but a basketball player is only allowed to play six quarters in a night. <laughs> I mean, really, I'm just – does that make a whole lot of sense I'll to you? I'll stay out of that one. I'm just, I'm just saying from the SSAC's standpoint, uh, well, well, and I'm not questioning them. I'm just – No, I, I think what – you know, honestly, I think, you know, most people I, – I think the people in the SSAC now, you know, don't agree with a lot of the rules, but you know they were rules that was made back in the forties. Well, and and they're hard to change right once yeah, they're in it. place. They're hard to change. Well, and I get yeah. that. I'm gonna tell you, okay. Growing up in Logan, all right, in the southern part of the state. Now, I don't know what y'all did in Mingo County, but you know, both score keepers would say, "Are we count quarters?" Yeah. More than likely, no. But you can't do yeah. that. But to, in today's game, you can't hardly do that. And then, but in Northern West Virginia, uh, when you, yeah, that's gonna be it. That's take one for the team. That's Going to put a runner up to second base now. And Spring Valley is going to take them. Coach, um, they don't, they, they, very rarely do they run from the baseball. No. They stand in there. They do. And, uh, Joe, this brings number zero. Brody Spencer. Brody Spencer. He's one for three. He's flew out the left, reached base on the air, singled, and stole a base. But yeah, we used to do it too. But nowadays, where everything's video and online, it's hard to. Get, I mean, no, you can't you do that now. Yeah. So, but it used to be five quarters. It, it's six now. But in Kentucky, you can play four games in a day, Joe. If that's what you want to do. Here comes Lucas. And yeah, it's fouled off to the right, one and one. On well, credit, you know they took a step, you know a couple steps, you they know, uh, giving them an extra quarter and then uh, they also gave them uh, instead of a certain uh, dead period they gave them 32 flex days so yeah you know, I mean they have they changed it up yeah, so. there's a pop up mile high Wilson coming over will make the catch yeah. and that's going to do it but damage has been done five more has crossed the plate for the T-Wolves they lead at 12 to 1 it's all Spring Valley heading into the top of the fifth inning this is high school baseball on the D&D Sports Network And we are back here as we see Joe Kinzer and Coach May up here in the booth. Uh, and our guy, uh, Charlie, the best PA guy in the business here as we see the Timberwolves uh, all over Huntington High 12 to 1 as we head here to the top of the, the fifth inning. So again, if they can hold them here, game will be over. Next home game for Spring Valley against Oak Hill coming up one week from today on the 24th. All right, here's the big thing, all right? So uh, I'm going to tell on myself. It, here's the big thing, Joe Kinzer. If Huntington don't play at least two runs, 
This ball game's over. Absolutely. So I went to work Monday, came home at uh, 4 o'clock. Uh -huh. No, got home at 4.45. Turned on radio. Listen a little bit of Sean Hannity. Yep. Yeah. You know, get, get some news. Daryl, at least people saying, my gosh, at least Daryl McCoy, you don't have a left wing liberal beside of you. Yeah. So, uh, you and I was like, oh, crap, man. It's it's it's, uh, <laughs> it's tax day. Yeah. H&R. Yeah. yeah, and the tax place closed at 6 o'clock. April 15th. Yeah, I went, I went down there real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> the, uh, it, it, April 15th gets you every year. It snuck up on me this year. Swinging a miss, Tavion Wilson, couple of hits tonight. Yeah, Tavion you know, Wilson one hit. got a uh, full head of hair there. The uh, when I was younger, the uh, people with hair like that, everybody hollered, used mane and tail. <laughs> Counts even a two. Yeah. Mane and tail, I remember that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, oh, gloveless one. Tavion the gloveless one. Yep. Yeah. It's, uh, whatever works. He's hit the ball well tonight. And that was a nice play. It forced out a home plate in the, oh, in the last half absolutely. inning, barehanded, just charging it. It was. Here comes the 2 2 pitch. Oh, nice. Hit the shortstop. Going to be a play at first. Good job, good scoop. Ferguson's done an excellent job over Played there well. short. Played well tonight. And the one play he made coming from short was unreal. And they put in in Spring Valley tonight has played solid defense. They have. And if they can do that, they're going to be tough to beat by anyone. Absolutely. I mean, if, the, if they can limit their ears, because they've got really good bats. David Robson had a good – Cut at it. He didn't get cheap, uh, cheated on that one. Nothing and one to count. I'll tell you, uh, just got some breaking news. Uh, How breaking is it on the one to ten scale? 7.3. Six and a half, seven. Okay. The uh, David Early has committed to Radford University. The uh, so former Logan Wildcat transferring to Radford. Uh, you know, I Dan, I think he, he's either Dan or Todd Rush played there. Can't remember. No, no. Wait a minute. Dan, it was Todd, but I believe because Dan went to Bridgewater. One of them went to Bridgewater. Dan played at Bridgewater. Okay, so I think Todd. they both played at Bridgewater at the end. But I David think. Early, that Radford's good school. It is. Radford's it is. A really good school. I went to a uh, summer camp there one year. The uh, so it's real close. Now to James to Madison, Madison, right yeah. in that area. Center yeah. fielder number nine, Brian Robinson. Brian Robinson. So. One out of way, perhaps with this one being over. He got a piece of it. Second baseman's going to charge it, throw over to first. Oh, nice. Not in time. Good hustle there by Brian Robinson. Have you ever been on Bridgewater's campus, Joe Kinzer? No, I never Beautiful have. Beautiful place. Beautiful. One of the prettiest schools, one of the prettiest campuses for a small school that I was ever on. Uh, Jacob Hill has a base hit and a walk tonight for the now Huntington. Now batting third baseman, number 23, Jacob Hale. Then our buddy Randy Casey, I, I read on the on D&D, yeah. &D, Tennessee Wesleyan. Tennessee Wesleyan. Congrats, Coach Casey. Yeah, and that's what people understand, you know, situations like that. That's just more opportunity for mountain athletes because those yeah. are people we got connections with and can help these kids get a spot at the next level. Uh, Randy, I'm sure he'll do good wherever he's at. He's always did. Yeah. Here comes the 1-0. Runner one on one. first. Here is, uh, you know, they, they got to make something happen here. You see the first uh, base runner leading off there. Got to make something happen because they're one out away. If they don't score here, That they need at least uh, uh, two runs here to keep this thing alive, Joe Kinzer. I'm sitting. I didn't flinch. I'm sitting back. Uh -huh. <laughs> I did. Did you flinch? You I didn't did. flinch. Yeah, I did. I can't. Uh, 
Montoya one pitch away from nailing this one down. And credit Montoya coming in for relief. He's done a great job. He has. Pitch number 14 for him. Just missing two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Yeah, Mon Montoya, 14 pitches. It seems like he's been in there an eternity and uh, hasn't gave up anything. Runner for first yep. is going. There he goes. Pitch is missed, throw down to second base. Not in time. Stolen base. Stolen base for Brian Robinson. That's two plates at second that were really close. Good throws. That was a good throw by Jameson Smith. Jameson Smith, yeah. Oh, okay. Here comes the payoff pitch from Montoya. Yeah, that's not Montoya. That's Dylan Robertson. Dylan Robertson, out. okay. We got the wrong number. Sorry, Mr. Robertson. It takes teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. And, uh, hey, listen, me and Daryl have talked about it over and over. We can't say enough about these kids from Spring Valley. They No, it's Spring Valley Media team. They They're do unbelievable. Phenomenal job. Max, Matt, Tristan, Jake. They, uh, they, the, uh, and, I, and I forgot my other buddy that is here. And the, uh, he's only been with us a couple times. He's here today. I seen him more ago. They do a good job. Jake. He ain't here tonight, but Jake does a good job on the mic. So I like to aggravate him, but he does a good job. Dylan Robertson plateward, and this has been an extent of the bat. Jacob Hill fighting it off. Fouled out to the hillside there across the road. Nice. Nice hit there, staying alive as uh, a yeah. full count here. 3-2, two, two outs. This is not a bad Huntington baseball team. No, and listen, right now, uh, I tell you, they got half their team because, you know, they got a few players out. Uh, Swing and a miss, that's going to be it. Go ahead, Darrell. Yep, due to some miscellaneous stuff. But uh, this uh, tonight, it's going to be the Spring yeah, Valley Timberwolves getting a huge 12-1 victory over the Crosstown rival Huntington High Highlanders. Joe Kendrick and Mate Darrell McCoy will be back here in just a second. As we're going to go to commercial break, and we'll come right back and name the Mingy Beef Jerky player of the game. So make sure you come right back and join us here in two minutes. If you're looking for a great selection and a great experience for your next Harley Davidson, come on down to Mount St. Harley Davidson here in Del Barton, West Virginia. We have new 2023 models in stock and ready for delivery. Special financing available. Or choose pre owned with one of the largest inventories in the tri state area with great low prices. Visit our showroom filled with licensed Harley-Davidson apparel and more. Don't write that check until you check with us, Mountain State Harley-Davidson, 61 Priest Bottom Road, or visit us online at mountainstatehd.com. If you're injured in a car wreck, don't delay. Give me a call today, Justin Markham. Here at Markham Law Office, we will fight for you. Don't settle for a handshake and a small check from the insurance companies. Give us a call. Don't take on the big insurance companies alone. We will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Here at Markham Law Office, you're more than a client. You're family, and we take care of family. Give me a call. Justin Markham, attorney at law. Are you ready to join the future of coal mining? At Blackhawk Mining, we are a national leader in the production of metallurgical coal with a foundation built on a strong safety culture and an unmatched work ethic. We're not just co-workers, we're a family, and together we create an environment where everyone can thrive and make their mark. We invite you to join our team at Blackhawk Mining as we continue to build on our tradition while empowering the next generation of coal miners. Blackhawk Mining, shaping the future of coal production today. Unfortunately, water, mold, or fire damage can happen to you. Restoration One of Southern West Virginia is available 24-7 to help take the stress out of your mess. Our primary goal is to respond and restore your property back to normal as quickly and safely as possible. When disaster strikes, Restoration One is your go-to cleanup crew. Save our number now in case you need us later. Whether the job is big or small, give Restoration One a call. 304-443-4959.
Eastern Kentucky understands the importance of taking care of one another. That's why after graduation, I came home. 25 years later, I've put together a team at Glenmar and Hammond Law Offices dedicated to fighting for your legal rights. When you're dealing with a sensitive legal issue, you want someone who will take care of you as a person, not just another case. Our team will help you through the legal process of social security, personal injury, work injury, car wrecks, wrongful death, medical malpractice, and nursing home neglect. Call us today. At Hanley Funeral Home, we offer unique opportunities for families to create healing moments after loss. With over 55 years of experience serving the Boone, Logan, and Lincoln communities, our staff will help you discover ways to pay tribute, whether that be at a burial service at one of our cemeteries or a personalized lasting memorial. Visit us at www.hanleyfh.com or call 304-369-0718. The Handley family of business thanks you for your support. If you were pushed out of the area because of loss of work in the coal industry, look no longer. Jim Marr is here for you. Jim Marr is now hiring for all positions in the coal field. Stop by their offices in Logan, West Virginia or in Willing, West Virginia and apply today. Come visit us at Castles Jewelry and Co-Run today. We got a history of making sure our clients' needs and wants are met. Castles Jewelry has a large selection of rings, necklaces, bracelets, and more. Remember, friends come and go. Jewelry lasts forever. I'm Bruce Walters with Bruce Walters Key in Pikeville, Kentucky. We have the area's largest selection of new Kias and more arriving daily. Come shop us in Pikeville. I guarantee you, you'll find the Kia for you. At Bruce Walters Kia, your new Kia comes with a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Also at Bruce Walters Kia, you'll get free oil changes for life. Finding your new Kia is easy. Come shop us in Pikeville or shop us online at brucewalterskia.com. I cared about drugs more than I did anything, even my kids. There didn't used to be help like this. ARC has changed my whole life. They meet you where you're at. They love you back to life. I don't wake up thinking, how am I going to get my drugs today? I'm grateful for addiction recovery care. It was the place I was needing. I mean, it couldn't get any better, to be honest with you. back here at Spring Valley High School as you see the Timberwolves with a 12-1 victory over the Huntington High Highlanders, the Crosstown Rivals. Coach May, Joe Kendra, Daryl McCoy here on the call with Max, Matt, and uh, Tristan out in the field here as uh, we are waiting for the Mingy Beef Jerky player of the game here as uh, just uh, a good ball game, uh, stellar ball game here by uh, where, where the they Timberwolves. Okay. You just tell me where to get where to go to. We're waiting. Uh, Charlie, we'll see you, I guess, next week. See you, Charlie. As, uh, as we're coming up here, yeah. guys. Once again, they're all Spring Valley, Huntington got up on them one to nothing in the first inning, and they, they struggled a little bit early on, as they did with Riverside the other night. But then it's like all of a sudden they just started falling into that rhythm and that groove and got their bats going and – pretty much all she wrote uh, and one, like you said they're so aggressive on the base base pass and here we go as we see Joe Kinder with the player of the game let's see oh, okay I didn't know where at okay just tell me where to go there we go Joe Kinder okay. uh, he's looking for it yeah interviewing right. the player of the game
And welcome back here to Spring Valley High School. Player of the game is shortstop Cole Ferguson. And Cole, not too bad of a night. Uh, three base hits, four RBIs, some nice plays out on the field. Just talk about your uh, performance. Um, I think I played well. I've, I've been in a slump the past couple games, and I haven't been that uh, well in the field. I haven't had much confidence, but I think tonight gave me back my confidence to come back and play. And I think our team, we're really good, and we got a big game tomorrow, so we got to come out like fire and destroy tomorrow. What was your your bats tonight? I mean, was you seeing the ball better? Or what? I had a, my buddy Garrett talk me up and said, "Go out and play, play the play the game. Uh, you're a good athlete. You know, you just you just got to go play and be the athlete you can be." I mean, this makes my second time watching you guys play this year. One thing I like about it, when you when you guys make con you know pretty much make contact, put pressure on the defense. You guys are very aggressive on the base yes, path. Sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we work on base running a lot in practice. I mean, every time we have practice, we always at least one uh, bases once practice. So uh, Austin Pratt, he loves to run bases. So he, we got a lot of speed. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna execute that as much as we can. How important was that play? I believe it was early on the first or second inning. They had a runner at second base, and it was a uh, you turned a six unassisted double play. How big of a play was that? Um, it was pretty big. I uh, stopped both runners from coming in. Um, it was still. I mean, it was zero zero, and that guy could have scored. Tavian, Tavian Wilson, he's pretty fast, so he definitely could have got around the third. Got him going on home, scored another run. Walk us through that play where we thought that there was going to be a base hit. It was right at the back of second base, and you had to cover pretty much about three acres of a country mile to, to get the play. Um, I mean, I just, as soon as I saw the ball come off the bat, I just took off running, and I, I had to choose whether to slide head first or slide on my knee, and my knees, so uh, I got closer and closer, and I decided to slide on my knees and stick my glove out and put it in the, put it in the palm. Congratulations on another big win for the ball club, and again, you guys got a lot of games played in the next several days. Yes, sir, we do. We'll come out and execute. That's Cole Ferguson. He is our player of the game. Three hits, four RBIs, and he also uh, played a lot of great defense here tonight. And, Daryl, back to you. All right, guys, as we are back here, I uh, want to uh, once again, uh, congratulations to the Spring Valley Timberwolves with a 12-1 victory over the Huntington Highlanders. Guys, we could not do this without the great folks at uh, home and at these businesses, you folks at home and our local businesses which we want to thank Robertson Signs and Graphics, Maddox Law Office, Great American Realty, Wayne County Youth Soccer League, Trace Hermanos Nunez, OVP Health, Realty Exchange, Skyscape by David Muraz, Renacan, Mosser Apartment Rentals, uh, Greenleaf Environmental Services, CK Flores, Davis's Place, JDV Flooring, South Huntington Animal Hospital, Kenneth Paddock's Attorney at Law, also want to thank American Legion, Post 93, and Booten Realty Service, as well as Huntington L House, Blackhawk Mining, Jim Mars Services, Restoration One, Mingy Beef Jerky, Markham Law Office, Brookview Physical Therapy, and our good friends at Tug Valley Wellness Clinic. Guys, we will see you next week for more Spring Valley Baseball as they'll go on the road uh, to finish off this week. So make sure you continue cheering for the Timberwolves, and we will see you soon. Till next time, so long.